Corbett. Look, I know I look a lot like the other Jeremy Corbett who was on the show before this, but I swear it's just a crazy coincidence. This is Seven Days. I thought this week we might change things up and just chat about our feelings. Uh, then a bunch of news happened, so we'll probably just talk about that, to be honest. Let's meet the team, <laughs> shall we? And leading team one is the long-lost love child of Ellen DeGeneres and some scaffolding. It's Mel Bracewell! <laughs> Um, how's the last seven days been? Oh, the last few weeks have been rough for a Jacinda Ardern impersonator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I'll look for a new career. I know. I feel like I had something to do with it because recently I saw her post a video, thought she was looking great, tried to type slay. My phone autocorrected it to slag with three <laughs> exclamation marks. So the misogynistic bullying, that's mostly me. That's mostly me. <laughs> right, and surely you've bullied a team uh, to I join have you this evening. A team. Who have you bullied? My team is something you might hear at a pro hunting rally. It's mm. more poaching. It's Bailey Poaching and Joseph Moore. Yeah. 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 Right over to the leader of Team 2. His mother was a judge, but to me it always feels like he's the one delivering long sentences. It's <laughs> Di Henwood. Hi, thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, good to see you, buddy. How, how you doing? How's the last seven days been? I'm trying to save a bit of cash, okay. right, you know? Yeah. So I'm power washing out my gutter and Mm. Right, because we had a had a person around who said my drain pipe was clogged, okay. right, and that he only he could unclog it. <laughs> so I did a bit of uh, looking on the internet <laughs> and found out if you jam a pressure washer down there and then just press go, mm. it all comes out the bottom. Right. So I did that, but you're meant to be a bit bigger than a five and a half foot guy who weighs in at about sixty <laughs> kg. So. <laughs> I went flying off the ladder. <laughs> so I'm mildly injured, mm. and the downpipe's really blocked now because it's got <laughs> half a pressure washer. Yeah. Stuck <laughs> Who's on your team? Oh, Jeremy, swaddle me up and get me to eat my veggies because we have two new mums on oh. Team 2 tonight. Please get up to Angela Dravid and Lana Walters. Yeah. Lovely. Both, both, both. All right. We're going to kick things off with a round of newsmakers. This is where I show our team some pictures my team of assistants have cut out of the papers, and they'll tell me what makes those pictures newsworthy. And Team 1, this is your picture. I want to know what makes that picture newsworthy. Mm. Oh, oh, that's where I left it. <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da. Uh, now, I'll let you get away with one Ram Raid, but if you do two, that's a fail on the restricted test. <laughs> Just a listing on Trade Me being like, just a couple scratches. <laughs> there seems to be a new Ram Raid story every two days. Every two days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there's, there's a quite a big one, right? The, the, uh, yes, there yeah. was a, a, an older citizen carrying out a Ram Raid, right? Yes, I think this was a, a grandma who Ram Raided. The Ram Raiders. Yeah, correct. You're, you're bang on. That's Crazy. the aftermath, in fact, of an attempted Ram Raid of a Spark mobile store in Cambridge. The assailants didn't get far because the 63-year-old grandmother Ram Raided the Ram Raiders, and her car <laughs> took $10,000 worth of damage that she's trying to recoup right now. For those who want more information on the story, may I recommend not Googling the words ramming granny. <laughs> <laughs> the, the grandma, she, she didn't ram the store. She rammed the getaway yeah. car. Didn't she? Um, how bad is that getaway driver that you can't get away from a grandma <laughs> ploughing into you at 30 k's an hour? <laughs> well, they say grandma, but I mean, they're focusing on the grandma aspect, but she's only 63. <laughs> old enough how to old be your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I just find it so interesting. She did it to stop these kids um, robbing a spark store. I just love the idea of an old lady really going to bat for spark. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Not one more SIM card! <laughs> 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 Kids try to steal the phones, but then they're stuck to the desk, so they just fling that. <laughs> also, you mentioned there was ten thousand dollars worth of damage. Yeah. To the car. They said about two thousand dollars was the bumper, and then eight thousand dollars were the uh, odd fellows left in her glove compartment. <laughs> yeah. I don't get how this is a story. Like, this is an elderly person who's smashed into another car. That happens <laughs> all the time in power. <laughs> And the insurance won't pay for this, you know? No. And it's it's typical sexism, I think, from, from insurance <laughs> yeah. companies being sexist against female drivers who deliberately drive their car into another car. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Should just, be an where, do you, where do you stand on vigilantism? <laughs> <laughs> where do you... I don't know. Where do you guys... <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> you stand on the word. <laughs> Do you think it's a good thing? Because she did stop the Ram Raiders. Stop them, but... I still don't know if you mean crime fighting or not eating meat. <laughs> <laughs> Big girl into you. Big girl. You know, we, we are not a policeman, but you're... Vigilantism? Pro It'd be a terrible movie, wouldn't it? Like, I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am a super gold card holder. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hear that. He's only 63. <laughs> I think... feel for this woman. No, They're calling her a I'm granny. Gonna... They're making out that she's lost her marbles and yeah. she's 63. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back you up here. Corbett? Do you need a nap? <laughs> Getting a little bit? We get a quarter? We do, I probably do. Let's get Jeremy his snacks, guys. Yeah. Uh, What's your name again? <laughs> Are you the even, nurse? Just so people know, that's not an earpiece, that's a hearing aid. Yeah. <laughs> After the thing happened, she gave a really detailed report to the police. Mm. Um, the detail included how she hit the car, yeah. um, who she's inviting over for Christmas, <laughs> who's bringing the potato salad, uh, that her neighbour's boyfriend has a new... Um, um, oriental sister. Um, <laughs> how is this? How does this ram raid even succeed? Surely a mobile phone store would put one of those glass screen protectors over there. Wouldn't it? Yeah. You wouldn't be able to break it. Even go full case on it. <laughs> full case. Yeah, but, those but, no, you never said your opinions on ventriloquism or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. Ventriloquism. <laughs> Ventriloquism, ventriloquism is abhorrent <laughs> witchcraft. It needs to be stopped. But, uh, my my stance on random vigilantism is, is it is all good sort of. Yeah. It's <laughs> all right, team two, you ready for a picture? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Have a look at this. Tell me why that photo is newsworthy. Oh, it's the original cast of Seven Days. Can you... <laughs> <laughs> what have we got here? We've got some sort of... This is Kawo Rescue, I reckon, just putting the dots together. Love that show. <laughs> uh, is it three hot new bombshells into the villa? <laughs> Look, I think it's just three men in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty big uh, story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I think um, this is potentially about the ravages of colonisation. <laughs> Go well, on. it could have been. It could have been actually if this wasn't stopped. This is quite an interesting story. The uh, Kawo Volunteer Coast Guard. They were responding to a distress call from a lost yacht this week when they came across a an armed French warship in the Hauraki Gulf. Ship was enormous. Was described as taking up B4, C4, D4, and E4. <laughs> <laughs> Huge. Look, so they found a French warship, a frigate. But so I, I, this, it was over here legit, though, wasn't it getting fixed? We still don't know. They, they, they wouldn't tell us why they're here. They won't confirm or deny, but they did help them find the lost yacht, so I guess... Oh, look, yeah. that. first they came for Rainbow Warrior, now they've come for Rainbow's End, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I heard they found the ship when the Coast Guard said, um, Marco! <laughs> <laughs> the captain came out, he's like, actually, it's Pierre. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They, they contacted them and they said, why are you here? Mm. And they said, we can't say. Right. And then they were like, what do you think of New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> they were quite evasive, though, eh? Like, they radioed in the New Zealand Coast Guard and they were like, oh, can you see where we are? And the French were like, oh, where we are? No, where we are. <laughs> <laughs> where we are. And then they had a big laugh about it. It was real fun. What's next, Jeremy? <laughs> Um, you know, a, a lot of people are like, oh, what's this mysterious French boat doing in our waters? And I'm like, relax, it's nothing. That's just how Saint-Pierre finds his sushi. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Of course. Yeah. laughs> we'll wrap it up there. Uh, let's go to the points for that. Enjoyed that. Um, team one, you can have the number of places New Zealand has dropped in the world's most powerful passport rankings. We've dropped ten places. Oh. Yeah. Uh, even worse, number of times New Zealand was mentioned in the top 50 places to get good coffee. Zero. Wow. Yeah, oh what about Wild things. Beam? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't make it. Oh, but that does mean you get zero. You got ten. Team one wins. You yeah. get a start. Question, what are the teams playing for? Yes, well, why, of course, it's a worthy prize ripped from the headlines. Join me in gasping in awe, saying, ooh, as I show you tonight's prize, one lucky team is taking home. Yes, it's a French sailor we captured from the warship <laughs> in the Hauraki Gulf. <laughs> now, he doesn't seem to speak English, or he does, but he just refuses to because he's better than you. That's what you're playing for. 
All right, we're moving on time now for Yes Minister on 7 Days, and this is where we dive headfirst into the muck of politics by getting our panellists to quiz a sitting MP and attempting to trick them into saying the word yes or no. Please join me in welcoming Labor's new Minister for Police, Hutt South MP, the Honourable Jenny Anderson. <laughs> Hi, Honourable Jenny Anderson. Lovely for you. Park yourself there. You can move back into that little corner. Great. All right. Uh, so you don't say yes or no. That's your challenge. Got it. Teams, take it away. You're from the hut and you're Minister for Police. Is that a conflict? <laughs> <laughs> it works together really well sometimes. Okay. Jenny, is my information correct? Are you also the Minister for Seniors? I am the Minister for Seniors. Oh. Are you here doing a courtesy call <laughs> <there>? <laughs> I appreciate second, it. But just for a second, just to... Corbett genuinely went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, oh, um... I hear you have four kids. Wow. That is have right. Have you ever asked the police to borrow riot gear to um, control them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might come in handy sometimes. Yeah. yeah. You were in the police, weren't you? I was uh, non-sworn in the police. Right. And that's where you met your husband? I did indeed. He was a dog handler? He had a range of roles and one of those was, yes, dog handler. Is, is... Oh! <laughs> You're doing so well. That's all right, I don't count. <laughs> Carry on. Um, um, Jenny, someone told me something outrageous recently, and I want you to confirm if this is true or not. They told me that marijuana is illegal. <laughs> 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 like, I don't know what they've been smoking. So. <laughs> <laughs> have, they, have, they, have they been to rural New Zealand? <laughs> I grew up on Great Barrier and uh, it took me a long time to figure out why my mum would never let me eat the chocolate brownies at school. <laughs> <laughs> and Jenny, have you arrested your mum? Jenny, do you know who you're going to vote for this election? I do. Uh, yourself? I will vote for myself. Oh, a bit arrogant. <laughs> You're the Associate Minister for Treaty Negotiations as well. That is correct. Which side are you on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are no sides. There are no sides. Oh. Answer. I want to ask a, a more monopoly-based question. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Do you get a get-out-of-jail-free card? And if so, can I borrow one? Not that I'm planning on any virgin and it's some... <laughs> Are you asking me to help you get off? Is that... No, no. Oh! This, is oh, right. this escalated quickly. <laughs> Minister for seniors. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Oh, no, it's... Not often I see die speechless, but I think you've done it. He's <laughs> flustered. <laughs> you have a go. Your partner is a dog handler. Um, has he ever accidentally called you a good girl? <laughs> <laughs> Don't think so. Yeah. Um, so you're not a stranger to crime. You recently stole a pie. What? That, like, well, you tried to pay for a pie, but then your card declined, so things are going did, quite tough. I read about. It's crazy that that was in the news. <laughs> You know, is this a slippery slope? What's next? Manslaughter? <laughs> Na nachos, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I inadvertently stole a pie on the first day of the job as <gasps> Minister of Police. Yes. Wow. I mean, the, the police minister stealing, that's like the health minister breaking lockdown rules. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, I've got a friend. <laughs> who claims police officers have to buy their own uniforms. I tend to believe that police officers get a uniform <laughs> given to them. Can you settle this argument? That they are provided with core areas. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're exactly the words your friend said. <laughs> I think it was it's... more about having to upgrade their vest, in which case they might need to use some of is their your, own is money. Your is your friend a police officer, though? Are they just trying to purchase it? Definitely you? not. <laughs> Jeremy, Di, I am so jealous I don't get to hang out with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> the chance you have. Oh, uh, you've been a great sport. Give it up for Ginny Anderson. Yes! <laughs> Wonderful. Ginny, thank you so much. And you know what? I'm going to take the win. I'm going to get a star. You guys didn't do anything. Great round of yes, Minister. <laughs>
Look, let's be frank. Comedy is the easiest job in the world. And to prove it, our partners at Frank Energy, wonderful people, they're willing to pay you $500 worth of their wonderful power simply for being funny. Just caption this picture and the power voucher could be yours if we choose your name. Head on over to the 7 Days Instagram page now to enter, then head on back right after the show to find out who won, and I hope it's you. Let's take a break. We'll see you back here for Club Topicana on 7 Days. <laughs> kids by telling them the Xbox is broken because we're headed to the beach. It's time for Club Topicana. Play the steel drum. Head on down, teams. Much shorter trip for Team 1. A uh, quick shout out to our mystery steel drum player behind the scenes, uh, a man by the name of S. Potify. <laughs> and a further, further shout out, of course, to the good people of Dole Pineapples. You know what they say, if you like pina colada, but don't like rum or coconut milk, then you don't like pina colada, you just like pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> All right, inside this dull pineapple is not just the highly sought after bromelain enzyme, which helps break down protein, but some stories <laughs> of the week I'd like to hear some more about. And uh, we'll begin with this one. Scary kids shows. Yes, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, the gory horror movie set in the 100 Acre Wood, came to streaming services this week. Not getting the best reviews, to be honest, but what I'd like more of is examples of scary kids shows, please. Hey, where are the wiggles? <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> Who loaded the finger guns? <laughs> Tinky Winky. Dipsy, la la, Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking, B1? I think I am, B2. It's murder time! <laughs> hey, Blue, I found another clue! <laughs> it's a finger. <laughs> <laughs> toot toot, chugga chugga, big red. <laughs> Jeff, we hit someone. <laughs> Jeff, we hit someone. Look, we don't talk about this, all right? We don't talk about this. I, I see him, I'm gonna see him every night for the rest of my life. We don't talk about this! <laughs> Hi ho, Kermit the Frog here. For the next 24 hours, all crime is legal on Sesame Street, so Big Bird, best get flying, buddy! <laughs> Uh. Wow, Bluey, isn't this chocolate delicious? <laughs> Bluey? Bluey? <laughs> <laughs> Coming to cinemas this summer, High School Musical 4, The Active Shooter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. All right, let's get another topic. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, this week the curtain fell on Andrew Lloyd Webber's musical The Phantom of the Opera for the final time after a record 35 year run on Broadway. What I'm looking for though is some scenes from some of Broadway's more short lived musicals, please. Greece is a place, it's a place, it's a country. <laughs> Greece is right next to Turkey. <laughs> Welcome to Two Phantom, Two Opera, part of the Phantom and the Furious series. <laughs> um, this is an update from Auckland Transport. Your next bus will arrive in 525,000. <laughs> <laughs> Cook me some f***ing eggs. <laughs> Dial Up, the musical. I wanna be a part of it. New Plymouth, New Plymouth. <laughs> All right, back to the pineapple. Um, OK, we're going to the beehive as the cost of living uh, skyrockets. Kiwi politicians revealed their food spending habits this week. Prime Minister Chris Hipkins uh, outing himself as a pack and save shopper. And David Seymour saying he relies on $3.99 Pizza Hut pizzas. Great to hear <laughs> we've got so many foodies in charge. Makes me wonder, though, can the teams give me some scenes from the beehive lunchroom, please? 
The next person to put fish in the microwave <laughs> pays the $200 million treaty settlements out of their own pocket. <laughs> Oh, you know, I just think it's ridiculous. My dishes, uh, when they're done, you take your dishes and not mine. It's just some of these dishes are getting preferential treatment over <laughs> other dishes. And I think that's unconstitutional. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm a beehive, get it? <laughs> Whoever is the last person to do their dishes has to talk to Mike Hosking in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the stovetop's dirty again. I've said it, I've said it a hundred times now, this government is soft on grime. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go back to uh, Dole, see what comes out next. Uh, terrible burglars, a Milwaukee man was arrested this week after stealing a digital security camera, which continued to stream live as the thief took it back to his home. <laughs> Not particularly smart, and it makes me want to see more examples of terrible burglars, please. Go to work with me as a burglar. I start my day by eating a smoothie. Then I go to 424 Hampton Drive. Then I take five TVs. Then matcha latte. Then back to my house for 74 Hampton Drive. Mom, the kid's home alone. You know what we should do, right? We should call the authorities, let them know there's an underage citizen by himself. It's a <laughs> He probably misses his parents. And while we're at it, let's find a more honest living. <laughs> well, crazy, I've got the same TV. And the same Xbox. It's my house again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, oh, excuse me. Sorry to wake you. <laughs> Could you give us a hand lifting <laughs> the TV to the van? <laughs> and we'll call it New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. And uh, my final one this evening. On Wednesday, a man was arrested for breaking into the rhino enclosure at Auckland Zoo and having a swim. Uh, <laughs> true story, I'd like to hear unlikely things to hear at the zoo, please. Ah, a kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> the sloth has escaped. <laughs> Walk for your lives. <laughs> Gosh, these animals look happy and healthy. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dad, seriously, please, keep telling me facts about otters. <laughs> if you look here, you'll see the elephant, the world's biggest mammal, apart from your mum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, otters sleep in rivers. When they drift, they hold hands so they don't get separated. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, darling, I'm a man. He threw shit at me. I'm doing it back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Potify, please play those steel drums one more time. Back to your seats, everyone. That is Club Tropicana. A wonderful topical, tropical comedy from all involved. But this week, the star, in my opinion, goes to Team One. Oh. Congratulations. Oh, 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 good. Suffering your job. Controversial, always. It is a great round of Club Topicana, almost as great as the fresh taste of Dole pineapples. Dole, without them, artists would just paint bowls of nothing. <laughs> Time for a break. Catch you shortly from my audience. Could draw that on seven days. Time now for My Audience Could Draw That, and that's where we take members of our audience who have been watching a comedy show for free and make them do some work for once in their goddamn lives <laughs> by drawing us some pictures of a news story. Team One, I'd like you to tell me what this audience member has drawn. Please welcome our audience member. <laughs> Stand right there. Well done. Um, my name's Kitty. I went to Carolyn's Primary School, and this is my picture. <laughs> well done, Kitty. 
OK, what has she drawn, Team 1? I'm reading the words first. Kmart, Plunkett, Scotties. <laughs> yeah. There's a man talking about Australia and then also frying shrimp on the barbie because oh, I feel like you drew the shrimp on the barbie and you went, it's unclear, and then did the speech bubble <laughs> Australia in it. <laughs> in I some kind of uh, body of, like, a, a linear body of water, uh, a, ri a river, perhaps. Stream um, or creek. Stream, river, stream, creek or beck. It looks like a confusing place for a beach. Yeah. Because you've got the Kmart and then you've got the water oh. and you've got sand on one side, forest on this side. Mm -hmm. It's a real... I see. It's, it's like Jeremy Corbett's moat or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, is, this would have something to do with uh, old mate uh, Nobby Clark was talking about putting sand. Now, on. Bailey, don't make up names. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in Australia for a little while and you're telling me Nobby Clark's a real guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I know who Nobby Clark is. I know who Nobby Clark on account of his name being Nobby Clark. Um, <laughs> uh, Mirror of Invercargill. Yes, this would have been the... Um... They replaced Tim Shedd yeah. with the yeah. guy called Nobby yeah. Clark? Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry if this is how you found out. Yeah. <laughs> um, he proposed uh, building a beach on a stream of some sort next to a Kmart. Wait. In, a, in, in Invercargill, in... yeah. A beach. Yeah, I mean, well, you're looking at me like I'm Nobby Clark. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's crazy also. <laughs> this okay, is, yeah. well, I'm going to go with Bailey's answer. There's a beach, it. Nobby's Bay, they're going to call it. <laughs> I'm not sure. Kitty, can you explain what you've drawn, please? So this is Nobby Clark. Yes, yeah, it's Nobby ah. Clark. And he's dumping 4,000 tonnes of sand onto the side of a river that he wants to turn into a beach. Um, <laughs> and then this is a Kmart and a Plunkett that are apparently within shot of it. So it's going to be really nice. I think it's going to be great. <laughs> that is a great drawing. Give it up for Kitty. Thank you, Kitty. You can go. You're allowed. Yes. The story is, in an attempt to boost recreation and tourism, Invercargill Mayor Nobby Clark has proposed a new artificial inner-city beach to be installed on the oh. banks of the Otapuni <laughs> stream, right next to a Kmart and a Plunkett. To uh, coincide with the launch of the beach, Kathmandu and Vicargill have announced their new line of puffer bikinis. <laughs> <laughs> this is so weird, because usually, like a beach, you're surrounded by water and serenity, and this one, you're surrounded by Invercargill. <laughs> <laughs> Their warehouse are quite jealous, though, because Kmart's getting the beach, so they've got Ski Mountain. Ah, oh, right. Which actually turned out to be a spilt pallet of Purcell. But... <laughs> <laughs> I like how they described it as not far from a Kmart, because I feel like that sentence describes my mental state for the last three years. <laughs> <laughs> I think Pihar Rescue, Rescue is going to do a version um, Invercargill Rescue. Yeah. Um, not because of the beach, just getting people out of Invercargill. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Invercargill once in my life and I went to a kebab shop and I bought a, I asked for a falafel kebab from mm. the kebab shop <laughs> and the guy behind the counter went, now I have to warn you, it's vegetarian. <laughs> I'm like, how many angry dudes have come there? Like, what is this falafel you gave me? <laughs> I have to say, Amber Cargill, you get upset when we take the piss out of you, but then you go and do. <laughs> it's your own fault. All right, team two, you ready? Yeah. Yes. yes. What has this audience member drawn? Audience member, come in, please. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Away you go. Hi, I'm George. Um, I'm for, I went to Green Bay Primary School, and this is my picture. Well, George is an absolute weapon with the pens, eh? Yeah, Look at yeah. this. Is that a member of the ACC? Yeah, oh, no, no, that looks like the sort of the captain's hat, eh? But or is that yeah. a torch? Or an a eyeball. head torch? But then you you're wearing a torch and sunglasses, which is sort of <laughs> just pick one or the other. <laughs> yeah. Cancelling the torch now with the sunglasses <laughs> and diamonds. Wow. So they're in a hole or a. Yeah, or a, is, or a cave. Is it heaven or hell? <laughs> a cave would be the more formal version of hole. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> OK, I... so someone's climbing out. It feels like they're yeah. reaching out of the cave. OK, I have heard about a woman who spent a long time in a cave recently, but it didn't look like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm handing over okay, the Okay, a Spanish woman spent a really long time in a cave for science. Sounds feasible. George, can you tell us what you've drawn, please? Um, yeah, so a Spanish woman spent 500 days by herself in a cave. 
Um, this is her coming out of the cave. Um, then I don't really know what's in caves, so I drew a dead person. Sure. And then bat, a bat, a vampire, spiders, Indiana Jones, you know, Ghostbusters, lots of movie references. Pretty much. <laughs> And Cinema! <laughs> and she's emerging and you've got grass and sky there as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, and she's wearing sunglasses because she had to readjust to the light. Ah, ah That's yes. That's why days in the dark. But she's left the torch on because you oh. get forgetful after 500 days, wouldn't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this is my picture. Yeah! Great stuff. Good stuff, George. Thank you so much. Well done, uh, Team 2, specifically Lana. The story there, yes, Spanish endurance athlete Beatrice Flamini emerged from a cave this week after 500 days. It was an attempt to learn more about how the human mind and body deals with extreme solitude and deprivation. 500 days underground. Wait till she hears how long my grandma's up to. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we really are ramming grannies tonight. <laughs> Let me, like, 500 days. Hmm. The world was completely different when, when she went in there, you know. Like, you know, the, the pandemic was at a completely different stage, and she's going to feel so stupid coming out, being like, oh, I didn't have to wear that mask the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to tell the Queen about it. <laughs> yeah. It'd be so awkward you come out and you're like, ah, oh, no new ticks. <laughs> I didn't put my gym membership on hold. <laughs> <laughs> he had a good, I think, had a like, good time in the cave, mm. uh, considering all things. But you know who had an even better time? The bear who got to spend 500 days in a lovely house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, this, this just shows inequality, you know? Oh. A woman does this for 500 days, gets maybe an article. A mm. dude did it for three days and got a whole bloody religion. <laughs> <laughs> It would, be, it would be different if a guy did it. It would be much more fuss if a guy did it, wouldn't it? Mm. From the guy. But there's, there's a guy in her life, and she's got a husband, mm. and they, um, they asked him what he thought of her accomplishments, and um, he said, oh, that's where she went. Pull the... <laughs> <laughs> well, the dishes were piling up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, great round, great drawings. Please thank our audience drawers. They are lovely, Kitty and George. Uh, for points, Team 1, you can have the money, I love the story, the money a Denver flat earther spent on an experiment to prove the earth is flat. Um, he spent $20,000 and proved that it's not. <laughs> <laughs> You're conveniently sort of burying the evidence. Uh, team 2, you can have the price of the world's most expensive number plate, uh, sold for $24 million New Zealand dollars. Uh, P7 is the number plate. It was a charity auction in Dubai, uh, which means a shiny gold star for Team 2. It's good, it's the millions. If you like what you're watching on your television, don't forget comedy exists in real life as well. It's true. The New Zealand International Comedy Festival kicks off in May with over 600 performances in Auckland, featuring some of these fine people too, in Wellington and beyond. And one of those is us, the seven days live show at the Sky City Theatre. We'd love you to grab your tickets now at comedyfestival.co.nz. Check out the other offerings while you're there. Time now for one of my regularly scheduled power naps. You guys watch ads. We'll see you back here for Guess Who on Seven Days. <laughs> Sticking with us, it's time for a game of Guess Who, where we find someone from the news, we put a sack on the head and make our teams guess who they are. I promise we wash the sack every week. <laughs> Let's meet our Guess Who guest. <laughs> Walk this way, sir. Come up to here. Just keep coming there, there, and face that way. That's great. All right, teams, ask yes or no questions. You get a yes, you get another question, you get a no, it goes to the other team. Team one, you can begin. We, we've got to be thinking news this week. Um, yeah. uh, Parlez-vous français? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's it's pronounced non. non. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it doesn't. Oh, you're. Uh, are you this upcoming recession everyone's talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, bummer. I thought we could really he's, get to grips with it. If he's sounding kind of. Are like, you are you in the news because you're anno annoyed about something? I think that's a yes. Yes. Yeah, that's a yes. <laughs> He, let me help you, uh, it's something to do with a challenge. I don't know. Uh, Are you annoyed about the Wheat Bix Kiwi Kids triathlon? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. Oh, what about... No, he's the one issuing the challenge, if you like. OK. Oh. Did the ice bucket challenge happen in the last seven days? <laughs> <laughs> seven years. OK, no. No, not that. It's, no, more, it's about beliefs. Really? Oh. oh. Beliefs. Mm. Have you been challenging religions? No. 
Okay. Not 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 cool. religions. Cool. He's in. Oh. Oh, certainly oh. along that line. Supernatural. Yeah. Something supernatural. I don't know today. Yes. <gasps> yes. Oh. That's a yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh that's the still team two. Uh, Ghost Hunters. No, no, no. David no, no, Lomas. No, no. I get I... all my news from Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think I've seen this. We ask a question to, my... to narrow it down. Have you seen aliens? No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Are you contesting the existence of something? Yes. Yes. Are you challenging um, the ability to to like of, of uh, mediums. Yes. <gasps> oh, oh yes. His challenge is putting up a certain amount okay. of money. Okay, so you've laid down a challenge to to mediums to say you can't prove that you can talk to the dead, and we will pay you one million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough, because I can't wait any longer. <laughs> this is Craig Shearer. <laughs> Uh, chair of New Zealand, the uh, chair of the New Zealand Skeptic Society, and it's not a million, is it? But it is a considerable hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand dollars. So, what is the challenge? Well, it's not just psychics; it's anybody who can claim to do anything that's paranormal. So, uh, a, a psychic is one of them, but we've got two others that we're challenging right. as well. So, who are the three you've challenged? You could pick three so high profiles. Calvin Crookshank, who's a uh, an alleged psychic. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, Ken Ring, who claims he can predict uh, the weather in advance and predict earthquakes. Yeah. And there's uh, Kirsten Taylor, who's a naturopath, who makes the sleep drops remedy. So you're part of a sceptic society. I've always thought they didn't exist. Uh, <laughs> uh, so what conditions are the sort of the experiment set up in? Because it obviously has to be done in conditions that the psychic also yeah. can't um, change the... So we're, we're challenging these people and we invite them to come up with a, a fear test and then we would run the test to see whether they can actually do what they claim they can do. Have you heard from them? Uh, <laughs> um, little bits, yeah. <laughs> they haven't mostly agreed. Mostly it's go away. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You've, and you're pretty confident. So where's the 100k coming from? Uh, we've got $50,000 in our bank account, and right. we've also got the Association of Rationalists and Humanists who are putting up $50,000. If they could prove it, you could probably make back a lot of the money setting up a touring company kind of showing off the ghost. Well, it would be an amazing thing if they could prove it. I mean, yeah. yeah. Ken Ring claims he can predict earthquakes. Wouldn't it be amazing if he actually could and See, he could do the science and predict them and save all these people who are dying in it. Putting myself in their shoes, though, 100K small potatoes when I can predict the lotto numbers. Right. <laughs> I don't need your money. <laughs> I'm not going to come out and let people know I can do it. Yeah. When yeah. did you become a school? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh. About the time I met you at university. So I shut up. <laughs> Did you actually go to uni together? We did, Massey University. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love this yeah. show! <laughs> Apparently I'm hearing they've got a photo, they got a photo of the two of us. Well, well, I, I, did you provide I, it? I, I, wait, well, this is a stitch up! Yeah. <laughs> wait, it's so weird because I think Corbett's top left, but it kind of looks like me. <laughs> did you ever rent your forehead out for billboard smoke? <laughs> is this, this is the original Skeptic Society? Or? <laughs> 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 they were different times. <laughs> it was different material. So you went to together, but I must say, you've aged amazingly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this, this guest who has turned, hasn't it? <laughs> I will pay you $100,000 if you can prove uh, you kissed anyone that year. <laughs> <laughs> Let's well. not go there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> Give it up for Craig Shearer. <laughs> Craig, good to see you, buddy. <laughs> Better take your photos. Go on. Oh. You can keep that if you like. Yeah, I will, actually. All right. Uh, yeah, who guessed that correctly? It was Team One. Congratulations. You get a star. You get a star. There was a lot of help. It is break time. This is your last chance to win that juicy $500 Frank Energy voucher. Head on over to the 7 Days Instagram page and we'll announce a winner right after the show. All right, it's time for a break. As I said, Beat the Dingers next on 7 Days. <laughs> Time now for Beat the Ding, where I set a timer and make our comedians do things before it runs out. Nothing says entertainment like pressure combined with comedians sweating through their heavy on screen makeup. Each successful attempt earns them a star. I've got my dinger. Let's get dinging, shall we? 
We'll start with some celebrity news. Stranger Things star Millie Bobby Brown announced this week she's engaged to be wed to Jake Bon Jovi, the son of, you guessed it, John Bon Jovi. Mel, you have 10 seconds to name five celebrities who have celebrity parents. Go. Oh, you do. Your, your dad's a warrior. Baby. Next, next baby one. Coaching. Oh, shit. OK, I'm so excited by one. Um, oh, who are the Nepo babies? Who are the Nepo babies? Um, uh, Lily Rose Depp. Um, no idea. Oh, I, oh, I don't know. The Briscoes lady. <laughs> <laughs> It was a very hard challenge. I know. I, I was thinking about it before. I couldn't even do it without a time pressure. So uh, no star for you anyway, Mel. Our next story, a Scottish ultra runner was disqualified from a 50-mile race this week when it was discovered that she travelled over two miles of the event in a car. <laughs> yeah, Bailey, uh, you grew up in the UK. This should be easy. You have ten seconds to name six Olympic events but in a thick Scottish accent. <coughs> the 100-metre race. <laughs> Hey, Diving. <laughs> no, a, a hammer throw, uh, the leaping and running, and oh, the dancing with the stars. Sky <laughs> diving. I had eight different things to do with my mind. <laughs> I did none of them. <laughs> it was a great, it was a great accent, but no stars for you. Oh Haven't God. given out a star in the game so far. All right, oh, let's move on. A feral cat hunting competition for under four. 14-year-olds was cancelled in North Canterbury this week after criticism from animal rights groups, uh, even after organisers promised to disqualify any child who accidentally killed someone's pet. <laughs> Lana, you have 12 seconds to name six animals it's OK to kill. Go. Uh, guinea pig, hedgehog, possum, um, angry dog, uh, a little fish, big fish, um, a cow. <laughs> <laughs> no star for you. You're not allowed to kill guinea pigs. Don't kill guinea pigs. Don't do it. Have it's you ever owned a guinea pig? Very <laughs> yeah. easy to kill. Wouldn't they? <laughs> I'm not sure it's legal to do it deliberately. Uh, here we go. Blow up the competitive balloon reality show launched on three this week. Good stuff, Jackie Brown. Die, I know reality shows where adults build things out of colourful things designed for children aren't really your cup of tea. <laughs> but I've got one for you anyway. Here are some uh, pre-blown up balloons. And I'm going to give you, uh, let's see, 20 seconds to make me something really amazing. <laughs> go! Oh. Here we go. 20 Don't seconds. Don't die, you can do it. Oh, this is great. He's started well. He's oh, got wow. a... Oh, look like you know what you're doing, but... Yeah, the <laughs> twisting. <laughs> I do enjoy the sound. The sound alone is. I think his explanation for what he's made is going to be the real uh, issue at the end. Uh, two balloons going in there. Time is on the clock. Nice. Nice conjunction of yellow and orange. And that is... Stick the queen through. This, he would... Stop there. Hold it up. For everyone to see. Right, we're good. Wait, at the moment I'm going no star, but what's the ex what is it? Have you done the famous Queenstown uh, zip line? <laughs> <laughs> you deserve a star. I think you deserve a star. It was great stuff. That was enjoyable, but we're not here to enjoy ourselves, are we? It's a serious competition. If you look at our serious star chart right there, you'll see tonight's victorious team is Team One. Yes! John Pierre. Is yours. Please treat our French sailor well. That is it from us. Please join me in thanking our panelists tonight Mel, Joseph Bailey, Di, Angela, and Lana. We'll see you in seven days on Seven Days, Paul Mario. <laughs>Thank you, New Zealand On Air, for putting up the offer of $100,000 if we could prove that we're funny. <laughs> I think you can send the cheque through. <laughs>